Can a convertible Volkswagen Carmen Ghia break records on Bring a Trailer? Or will the cabriophobes ruin this auction? Let's find out. Nerd! Bid Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show. Get those nerds! Where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. Holy free holies, look at Michael Deeb. He's on vacation, but he's here recording Bid Nerds episodes for you, the loyal nerd nation. Welcome to a brand new episode of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd on the most interesting car of the day from all the auction sites. Uh, Michael Deeb, are you excited about today's car? I am actually uh, really, yeah, I can't say enough nice things about the consigner and the car is cool too. Today is one of those deals. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, uh, one, thank you for joining us and checking out the Bid Nerds. What we do is we find the most interesting car from all these auction sites. We have a conversation about that car. We predict what's going to happen with that car's auction. That is right. We predict the results and uh, you cannot take those predictions to the bank because we're always wrong. Uh, but what you can do is play along with us uh, and make your own predictions. Put your prediction, your bid uh, in the comments below when we do a little later in the show. And and then stick around to the end because we'll go in the future and we'll actually show you the results of that car's auctions and reconcile our poor predictions with what actually happened. So it's a lot of fun. It's like the price is right only with the most interesting car uh, from all the auction sites. Uh, and we also want to shout out to our good friends at Godden Classic of Las Vegas. Uh, they are where it's at. If you want a classic Porsche uh, or if you want to get your classic Porsche fixed or if you need parts for a classic <laughs> Porsche, check them out. All right, Michael Deeb, we know the owner of today's car. Uh, That's and, right, uh, we do. We have been watching this car closely. We know this car. Uh, what is it? Tell us all about Chef's car. All right, so Chef is a dyed-in-the-wool hardcore air-cooled vintage VM, BM, uh, VW fan. In fact, his handle is Chef. Well, no, what, what's his other handle? He's got a handle. V-Dub Slut. One of his handles is something. It's V-Dub, V-Dub Slut. Slut is one of his handles. Yeah, I love it. So um, when I first met Chef, I don't believe he owned a Porsche, but he had like these really cool uh, Volkswagens, including this modified 1963 Volkswagen. Chef bought it, um, was completely redone. Um, you know, they like stripped it down to the bare body. Uh, built a really cool air-cooled 1,914 cc flat four. It's got a four-speed manual transaxle. Um, the car shows 7,000 miles, but it's true mileage unknown. And of course, Chef and the car are both located in Las Vegas, Nevada. The car looks awesome with this like mirror glaze finish, uh, black paint with a red uh, cloth, like a red vinyl interior, and then it sits on 15-inch staggered with Fuchs style went rims. And then it's of course this car is four wheel discs all the way around. Um, the, the piece that really gets it for me the most, uh, JP, is the banjo style steering wheel, I think that gives the car such a classic, actually almost fifties, uh, or certainly early sixties, correct style. Uh, look, the car is awesome. Chef looks awesome behind the wheel. And as I mentioned in the comments of the listing, John, um, I'm, I know Chef to love this car so much, I was actually surprised to hear he was selling it. So, um, really interesting car. I know you know more about it than I do, uh, but the car is a looker. The motor helps it kind of rip. I think this thing, you know, has Chef said in one of the comments, it makes about 120 horsepower, um, which tells me that at like 12 or 1300 pounds, this car can get out of its own way. Um, really cool car. Stundy selling it. And I think somebody's going to be really, really stoked uh, if this car meets its reserve which I think it has a good chance to do so. So, John, I'll send it over to you. Tell us more about the car other than what I'm just basically reading off the platform. I know you know the car better than me. In fact, I'm guessing you've probably driven it once or twice. Yeah, I mean, I do. I, I, I shot this video that we were just showing here. Um, the car is... It's the nicest Carmen Ghia I've ever personally seen, and I think that most anyone will see. Um, this the the builder of the chef did not build this car. He bought it right. already finished. Um, the the builder is kind of a famous builder. I, it, his name escapes me. 
Um, I think it's in the ad uh, for the car. Um, but you know, this is this is a six figure build. There's no way you could, if if you bought a really nice clean uh, Volkswagen Carmen Ghia and wanted to reproduce this car, you're spending a hundred something thousand dollars or more. There's just wow. no way yeah. you could build this car. That's, um, that's true. And, and the crazy thing is, it's like. You know, you look at the prices of 356s, you know, 356 Speedsters or Coupes or Cabrios or Roadsters, um, and they're all, you know, easily in the six figures and stuff. And this car just isn't that much different, but they don't bring nearly as much money. Um, and with the performance that this particular car has with this amazing, uh, with the engine build, that 1900, you know, CC engine, uh, this thing just, you're absolutely right. It just rips. You can... Um, yeah. You know, the only reason Chef is selling it is because he bought a 930 turbo off of BAT um, and he's running out of storage space. So he had a place where he could uh, kind of store. He has a, yeah, a double cab uh, Volkswagen you know, bus. bus transporter. Uh, he's got a, what is it, a split window uh, yeah, something, 50s. you know, uh, yeah, 52, 53. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so his, his, his three Volkswagen collection is, it's, is small, but is as nice as they come, right? All his cars are immaculate. epic. It's um, epic. The only thing missing is a thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I just wish yeah. I had a picture of his garage in Summerlin because he's got one of those, yeah. those little teeny garage that fits two cars. And then he's got the small, the small little spot for like a golf yep. cart, you know, cause he's on a golf course. Yeah. Um, and he's got two lifts in the two car garage. So he's got his like GT three RS, uh, in that. And then all the Volkswagen <laughs> stacked around it and then his wife's car. And then he's got his 930 uh in the little you know golf thing and then he's got another card at, at another garage but he's losing that so he's like well uh something's got to go and i think he also wants yet another car he's just you know he, but these cars are amazing whoever whoever mm -hmm. is lucky enough to get this volkswagen if you're into carmen gears you're going to get the nicest one there is and everyone is it's just going it, to it's a showstopper uh every volkswagen he sh show he goes to you know when how they give plaques and stuff like that it wins everything yeah. all the time he just like i've yeah. gone to volkswagen shows with him i think it was what was it the um buses at the bridge or whatever is a big annual show yeah, in yeah, Las yeah, Vegas. yeah yeah and it's just that, like yeah. you know he just he leaves early and then he's getting calls hey you won the award you won best of show where are you you know he's like I, <laughs> Put it in the box with the rest of them. He just doesn't care anymore. Yeah. It's like, uh, so, so yeah, this car is just an immaculate build, uh, and it's going to be really interesting to see what the results will be. Uh, all that said, Michael Deeb, what do you think the results will be? What, uh, what's your take on okay. that? Okay. So you, I know you and I both know what the reserve is on this car, and here's what I'm going to say about the reserve without getting anybody in trouble, is that, Bring a trailer agreed to a reserve price that is significantly higher than the highest Carmen Ghia of any vintage or any body style has ever sold on their platform. That's how strong a car this is, and BAT uh, recognized that. With all of that in mind, um, our car is sitting at $30,000 on nine bids, which it kind of got up to right away when the listing went live. And then it's been pretty quiet um as we roll into the finish where i'm hoping Don't several say people how much jump time there is left by the way uh, no 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 yeah, yeah yeah i i really hope people uh you know jump in and uh and then bid this thing up so with all of that in mind jp i think that this car is going to set um yeah, maybe not a world record but certainly a bring a trailer record um and i'm going to go sixty-five thousand dollars and be the eternal optimist um and wish chef all the uh love in the world on this one and again that number will seem like a straight up bargain when you consider your take that it would take six figures to replicate this car. Or you could have this one right now and save 35%. Yeah. Um, the, you mentioned that uh, his reserve is higher than one has ever sold for on BAT. Yeah. Here's the thing. Um, one, that's true, but at its current bid, like on the first day, there was a bid for yeah. thirty thousand dollars, which is yeah. also higher than any Carmen. 
has ever has sold ever for sold. on VAT. <laughs> I think the highest of Carmen Ghia, any Carmen Ghia, was like twenty eight grand. So you right. know, right out of the gate, the opening bids were were higher. Um, and yep. looking at the looking at the chatter, you know, in the comments below, and and uh, you know, Chef has been getting uh, DMs, people asking you know really specific questions. Um, you know, everyone, people know that this is a six figure build. They know the builder of this car, this car, you know, has been in magazines. It's one of those types of deals. So, oh, yeah. it, you know, yes, it higher than anyone has ever sold. Yes. But I think kind of like the Scirocco that we talked about the other day and that, that, uh, Mark two Volkswagen, uh, GTI from a couple of months ago. And we've seen Corrado's mm -hmm. and a bunch of the water pumper, the eighties water pumpers, Volkswagens generally have not done well on BAT traditionally, so but I strange. think that's partly so because strange. we haven't seen really good ones show up until right. recently. Some, you know, people have tried to sell some kind of beat up stuff, um, yeah. but really, 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 really nice ones like this. This is, this is as like, I'll sound like a broken record. This is as nice as a Carmen Ghia as you will ever find. Um, yeah. Geez. You, you just, you know, the Scirocco, the 16 valve Scirocco went for almost $50,000. Uh, a GTI yeah. went for $80,000. Uh, a Corrado yeah. SLC we, went for 50 something grand. So it's you and not, I saw an early, an early R32 bring a hundred thousand dollars. We covered right. an R32 that brought a hundred grand. Yeah. Yeah. So we haven't seen a ton of air cooled Volkswagens on here. And I think it's time for some of them to it, it, here's the, now here's the flip side of all this is that Volkswagen people, air cooled Volkswagen people are traditionally very cheap. Like you go right. out to a Volkswagen show and it's a bunch of dirt bags. Um, and yeah. I, you know, I am, I'm a dirt bag. I, I, I understand that whole thing, but it's just, you're not talking about people with tons of money, even though then you look at some of these Volkswagen, you go, this is a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar, 21 window thing. You know, like where are these Volkswagen people that have this kind of money? They don't seem to show up in the community. Um, but, uh, yeah, so are there Volkswagen people out there that will appreciate this car enough to be able to stroke the check uh, to get it right. in their garage? And that's what remains to be seen. Your bid was what? $65,000. And what you're talking about is a very niche market. And, yeah. and, yeah. and it's, it is absolutely worth mentioning. You know, he, you know, in essence, chef is trying to thread the needle with this thing, you know, to find somebody that could afford it and wants it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm kind of, look, I I'm, I'm torn because this is a very good friend of ours and I want to, you know, I, I think this car is easily worth your bid. I just, I, I, I don't know if it'll reach that. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go somewhere well, better. in the high fifties. Uh, I'm going to say 58. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and see what happens. Let's roll the dice and, uh, keep our fingers crossed. I sure hope I'm wrong and I hope it exceeds your number. Uh, Michael D. Yeah. But uh, to be realistic, I think that in the 50s is kind of the number, even though it would take twice as much as that to build this car. I just don't know how many people out there have the money to, to, to snatch this car up. Hopefully there are a handful of people or just two that do and they battle against one another to get this thing. Um, all right, guys, now is oh. the time. If you're out there in the nerd herd, now is the time for you to put time your in. Uh, time stamp it like deep says, and, uh, he's going to go back to uh, fishing and, uh, we're going to fire up the future machine and find out what happens with this, uh, with chefs, Carmen Gia, Super are Gia. you friend of chef? Yeah. Are you friends of chef? You should be. This is, this is his face. Whoever buys the car will get one of these stickers. Friends of chef. <laughs> yeah. Find out right now. <laughs> Give me a second. Hey guys, I gotta tell you about our friends Godin Porsche of Las Vegas and Godin Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've gotta call our friend Steve at Godin. Save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for, Godin Porsche of Las Vegas.
get to Welcome it. Welcome back. Uh, you know, we're back in studio. We've been we've been a little clunky on our publishing lately. Our apologies. Uh, we are working on uh, a bunch of stuff. Obviously, we want to do. We're going to start doing the show live regularly. Um, and uh, also, uh, Michael Deep, you were you. Uh, a lot of people know, and some people don't. But uh, some of you all know that Michael Deep is working with the Haggerty Marketplace Group now. And so yeah. you were there on official capacity. Um, right. At, uh, in, at Monterey Car Week. I missed Monterey Car Week. I was seeing your photos and I was getting pretty jelly. Why don't you yeah. tell us about uh, what was going down yeah, in Monterey? This, awesome. What did I miss out on? Yeah, so, uh, I, listen, I couldn't tell you because I worked the entire week. I, I spent five days at the Jet Center Three of those days, John, we pulled 15 hours days uh, trying to move around 172 cars and set up essentially two or three warehouses, like like airplane hangars for cars to be on display and to set up the room for the auction, the live auction itself at the Jet Center. Three of those days, JP, we worked 15 hour days to get everything in order on time. And uh, successfully, I might add, we pulled it off without a hitch. I started in June. And I've met most of my coworkers on Zoom calls and emails. It was really fun to have everybody converge on Monterey and spend five days together with my like new team uh, down there. Uh, lots of hugs and sad goodbyes as everybody has to fly back home to the Midwest or the East Coast. But um, uh, really great to like to know that the people I'm interacting with. And then, you know, like when you work and you pull a 15 hour day with the same people and no, there's no drama, nobody got in fights or arguments, like all really like solid, good, amazing people. Some of them uh, really hit it off with and they feel like old friends, people like I've known for a while and, and guys I can't wait for you to meet um, in the coming years. Uh, John, it was pretty awesome what we did because. I was so busy. I didn't get to go to Works Reunion. I didn't get to go to Concorso Italiano. I didn't get to do anything because um, we worked so hard to pull it off. But it was really, really fun. Um, the auction was amazing. Uh, we knocked out 172 cars. And, um, wow. I, you know, very proud of the job we all did. We were patting ourselves on the back and tipped a couple of beers on Friday night. And it was really cool. Um, we did go to the track on Saturday uh, for some of the races. Haggerty puts up this building, JP, like right by turn three. That's like one of these like Formula One two-story, you know, luxury suites. So they can take care of their super high-end clients for sake of argument. Gordon Murray was sitting there having lunch with his wife when we went in. But picture this, JP, this beautiful building. It's for Haggerty's Radius clientele. As a Haggerty employee, we weren't really supposed to get in. We kind of talked our way past the door guy. We're up on the second level and we're watching a race start. McKeel Haggerty himself is hanging out with his family. And he's got 100 VIP clients in the building. He came and he stood with the car specialists, like the five or six of us me and uh you know ray schaefer and, and ramsey and we're like <laughs> we're like hanging out and i'm and i i snuck yuri and of course and i said i said to yuri i said look at this like look at all the people here like gordon murray is sitting there with his wife and mckeel haggerty is hanging out with us and he hung out with us for like an hour solid ignored his family and just was talking to us about you know basically all the millions of dollars we just put in their pocket i'm sure um but it was really cool we had a great time and and uh yeah it, it was it was fun. The weather was spectacular. I wished you were there, but you didn't make it. Ben, the professor, didn't make it. I mean, it was whoa. It was it was an unusual, like a very unusual um, Monterey Car Week. Uh, but I, you know, I saw some of the other usual suspects. I ran into Warren and Art and Lane. I saw those guys. They um, they did a, a at the at the Motorlux party at the Jet Center on Wednesday night. Radwood had their own display, which was super, super cool. And um, and so I got to see those guys for a couple of days. I, if you can imagine, John, I parked my 911 on the tarmac across from our hangar on Monday. And on Tuesday, I parked it there the same time. And in the middle of the day, I looked over and there's a bright yellow E36 M3 parked so close to my car, I can't get my front door open. And I'm <laughs> like, Fucking, I'm like fucking Warren. <laughs> he, he like, he like, you know, it was really funny. He pulled up, saw my car, and he went and locked me in. And I so I saw him like an hour later. I'm like, hey, you gonna move your car? Am I gonna door ding you? You know, it was pretty funny. So it was, yeah, man, it was really great. Like a big family reunion. I saw a lot of people came through. Um, uh, Frank Amoroso came and hung out. Kellen Patler, the good friends of mine, stopped by. If I forgot to say your name, please forgive me. But it was really, really fun. 
Well, that sounds spectacular. I'm sorry I missed out. Uh, Congratulations to you guys over at the Haggerty Marketplace. For the record, Haggerty Marketplace does not yet uh yet. sponsor this show yet. that is something yeah, that we yeah. would love to have them uh help us out with but uh for the record they are not supporting the show they are your employee michael deeb's employee right. not mine um employer so employer <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, sorry yeah. Uh, and uh so there it is uh, our employer uh, or rather our actual sponsor, not employer, uh, neither one yeah. of us are employed by our good friends at God and Porsche and God and Classic of Las Vegas. They had a pretty spectacular time uh, in Monterey as well. They won their class uh, oh, with good. the restoration project this year. So uh, the, the, yellow 993, the yellow 993 turbo, right? That is correct, yeah. And I made yeah, a film so- for them, and uh, so that's published on their channel. Go check it out. We'll probably put it on the Durfoss yeah. Nation channel at some point, Let's- too. Listen to this quick story. So on Wednesday, I'm I'm coming back into one of the hangars with all our cars in it, and I see Gary, Brian Miner, and Steve Thiel uh, pouring over a particular car of interest, and uh, and so I went running up to them and and said hello, and uh, and then I got to meet Dan, who's oh, the, nice. tech, yeah. uh, the, the the classic technician at Godden. So I got to meet him, and I told him that you were saying all these great things about him, and I got his number. And uh, he was going to try it. He said he knows a Greek mechanic out here in Northern California. He was going to try and find his number for me mm. that I could bring my 911 to. But otherwise, um, yeah, I know it was really cool to see those guys. And then they came back on Thursday night for the auction um, um, with, uh, uh, you know, Gary's really good friend, uh, Bill, who, uh, you know, runs one of the big hotels. So, um, so it was really, really fun to see those guys and hugs and kisses and all the nonsense. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it felt like home it was really nice nice well all right i guess let's get back to the business of bid nerds what do we actually bid do it. on this show is we we identify the most interesting car of the day uh we make a prediction as what's going to happen with that car's auctions what will the results be uh we'll tell you what we think the results will be uh and then later uh in the episode we will reconcile our predictions with what actually happened uh which oftentimes is wrong um so that's usually what we do on the daily show but on this show we're going to do this once a week we're going to do it live we're going to do all we're going to reconcile all of our predictions from last week uh it right here and show you how wrong we were and then we'll make our new predictions on this episode so this is not <laughs> an episode like the normal ones where you can stick around yeah. to the end and see what happens uh this particular thing this is this is we're doing it live we're doing it live. Live, live, live without Catherine. a net. That's right. <laughs> live live uh, without a net. Without a net. Uh, so we're going to start. So last week, because you were, uh, because Michael Deeb was in Monterey, we weren't able to do a show um, or do any predict. We did get one prediction in the can when we were doing our last yeah. session. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and reconcile our prediction from last week. So it's only going to be one car in this episode. Normally it'll be three, four, sometimes five cars that we'll be reconciling. Uh, But on this very first dumpster fire of a Bid Nerds Live uh, show, we're going to do one car. And this car is kind of special to us. Shout out to our good friend, Chef, Chef William. Uh, at uh, the Red Rock Country Club where him and I partner up every year and uh, we do uh, we put on Vegas Auto Fest which is coming up give on us, the 16th of September yeah give us the date the 16th of September which is Saturday September. right uh, it is a Saturday yeah so we yeah, are Saturday, not gearing Sunday, up for the Saturday. biggest car show of the year in Las Vegas uh, make it make make your way to Las this is a great year to come out to Vegas for Vegas Auto Fest uh, Michael D because this year is the first year that our show doesn't isn't on the same weekend as life is beautiful usually right. it is which means all the hotels are booked and it's really hard right. to come here but this year september 16th there's nothing else big going on we're the biggest thing going on so you can book a reasonably when? priced hotel uh, and when we is? do have a deal at the circa uh, okay cool so, when yeah. is when is formula one in relation to your weekend is it before you or after you Formula One is way after us. That's in uh, November. Um, so that's the, November. I think it's oh, like yeah, Thanksgiving yeah. weekend or something like that. Oh, okay. Or the so week before deep, or week after deep something in like the that. Air. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. cool. So that'll be really Very cool. Good. Come and see the, the new. Uh, anyway, so uh, back to Chef and his car. Chef, our good friend, Chef William decided on my recommendation thank you very much uh, he has well tell us about his car he, and what did he do with his car michael deeb this is the JP. reconciliation so we've already done the front half of this yeah but this is live. This is a new we'll episode kinda, true yeah let's just bring it yeah let's bring it in so what 
what Chef did is he took his beautiful, modified, and you know resto modded 1963 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia convertible and he threw it up on bring a trailer um, out of uh, Las Vegas he got really good feedback we took a, a you know kind of a deep dive into his particular car black with the red interior the beige carpets the beautiful banjo style uh, steering wheel um, if I remember correctly chef has like a uh, 2000 cc right isn't his a two liter flat four it was a 1944 14, something four, like that yeah night yeah 1914 cc um he's got you know dual carbs and and the car has been in plenty of like shows and awards you were saying later um how oftentimes he'll go and take it to a volkswagen show and then leave and they call him and they're like hey where you at man you won like best in show and he's like ah give the trophy to somebody else like he he got yeah. so many awards with this car he got tired of taking him home uh, but the car is really beautiful. I was actually surprised to see that he was selling it because I know how much he loves driving it. I know how, how proud he is of the car. I really thought it would be like kind of a forever car for him. But he decided to let it go um, based simply on the fact that he's starting to collect Porsches and he's running out of room. He's got like a finite number of cars in his garage. So if he wants to get a new car, he's got to let an existing car in his collection go. And that was the case here. So without further ado, JP, you and I thought that he was going to break the bank on this car. Um, I went $65,000. You came in under at $58,000. And what's interesting to note is when we were reviewing the car, it was sitting at thirty dollars which at the time was $2,000 higher than any Ghia had ever brought on Bring a Trailer before. So like when we were reviewing the car, he was already going to set a new record for a Ghia convertible. Um his car sold JP. Didn't he run it at no reserve too? No. Yeah, hold on just a second. Hey everybody out there. This is the this is the fun part of the live show. Um, I am not able to see uh, my scenes went. Oh, here we go. Now we can go back to the two of us. Okay, just wanted right. to do that. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. So JP, um he didn't run it with no reserve. It did have a reserve. But anyways, at so from 30 grand I said 65, you said 58. JP, he sold the car for $60,000 on 41 bids. Yep. He absolutely crushed it. Um congratulations to Chef and uh and to the new buyer when when you get that car and you see the fit and finish and drive it and see how well it drives, you're going to be you could not replicate it for $100,000. So that guy basically bought a done beautiful state-of-the-art like you know as good as it gets carmen Ghia convertible on for like 60 cents on the dollar really really well done chef absolutely crushed it he knocked it out of the park what do you think john and how uh, happy was he with the result was he really happy oh man i mean you know i was i was standing right next to him uh while it was going down and the thing is it was it was one of those exciting auctions i mean you know bring a trailer fought him on his reserve and by and large, I would agree with Bring a Trailer's general position that they need to have some downward pressure on reserves these days because we are seeing uh, price corrections in a lot of you know in a, in a lot of different types of cars. So uh, you know he went to them and said, "Hey, I want to," and I won't reveal his what the reserve was, uh, but let's just say it was a lot higher than uh, thirty thousand uh, dollars. Sure. Bring a trailer said the highest bid, uh, the 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 biggest number they'd ever gotten on any Gia ever prior to his was twenty nine thousand dollars. So they were like really like I don't know if we want to give you more than the the highest one ever. And yeah. you know he was ten you know tens of thousands of dollars more than that. So they agreed on a number, and um, you know here it was the day of the auction, and well actually like you said the first day the very first day the first you know, bid the, on the very first day was higher, was $30,000. That was higher than any Ghia had ever gone. And that was the first freaking day. So that tells you just how nice <laughs> his car was. The people that knew these cars were like, oh, yeah, this is a good one. So then, but not a lot of action for the rest of the week, right? It just kind of yeah. lingered for days and days and days. Chef was starting to get worried. He was like, you know, starting to make deals like, hey, how about uh, I take your car and you give me car and, uh, and you take the risk. <laughs> I was like, I should have taken up on it, taken him up on that, right? Um <laughs> <laughs> but there it was, you know, I told him just relax, you know, it all happens in the, in that last kind of, you know, 10 minutes and at the, close, yeah. uh, at the close and, you know, his auction was one of those auctions that 
went on, you know, because as you guys know, every time when, when it gets down to that last two minutes, someone makes a bid and then it adds two minutes and his auction went on for about a half an hour. With two minute increments. It would get down to like yeah. 10, 15 seconds. Boom, another grant. Boom, another grant. Like no one was doing big knockout punches. And there were like four or five different guys that were going at it till the bitter yeah. end. And, uh, and uh, you know, right there up to 60. We, I, I kind of thought at that point with the way the bids were coming, I'm like, sure, this thing's going to hit 75 grand. But it, it, <laughs> it did stall out at 60, um, if you can call it stalling out. Uh, but yes, of course, he was very happy. I think, look. Like you said, the person who's getting this car could not build that car for sixty grand. Not a chance. Right. You're spending no. twice that to build this car. Um, so they got a great deal, but that was still, you know, twice as much money as any Gia has ever gone. He didn't just break the record; he blew it up. Yeah. So congratulations, Chef. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, John, if we see a lot of Gias hit the market now. Uh, when, when people look, should I bring my Carmen Ghia to bring a trailer? And they look at their history and they see that one, a nice convertible brought um, $60,000. I think yeah. I think that should inspire a lot of people to bring their cars to market. So congratulations, Chef. I couldn't be happier for you. Sad to see your car go, I'm sure. But um, you've got to be thrilled with the return um, on your investment and what your car brought because you, you really did do um, better than I think everybody thought. Would yeah, be I mean, we, you and I have spoke. We we talked a lot. We we talk about Volkswagens fairly often. We've seen some water pumpers bring in some pretty big money, whereas they weren't bringing that kind. Of, like we saw that really nice Scirocco sixteen valve right. last week, uh, yep. or the week before that that actually brought real money. I mean, both of us kind of overbid it. Uh, we're all kind yeah. of like going after that that uh, eighty thousand dollar Mark II GTI that was a few months ago. But I think yeah. but you know, so a Scirocco getting forty thousand dollars or something um wasn't nearly as much as the eighty thousand dollar GTI, but that's still three, four, five times more than any Scirocco has ever gotten. So <laughs> yeah. it's nice to see that Volkswagens are starting to get appreciated. We we haven't really seen air cooled Volkswagens do very well on BAT. But partly this, I think for the same reason though, that we haven't really seen the Scirocco's and Corrado's do very well is because the examples that come to market haven't been very nice. Um, yeah. And so here it is, you know, Chef's Volkswagen brought all this money. Anyone else that goes to BAT, you know, I feel bad for, again, for those people that are setting those reserves because they're, now they're going to have to make an argument against <laughs> Chef's car. And most of the people that are going to bring Carmen Gia's to the market are not going to be at the level of Chef's car. Oh, I close. got sixty thousand dollars. I want it. You know, it's like, no, <laughs> yeah. dude, cool yeah. your jets turbo. That is not your <laughs> gear. Um, chill the f out and get real. Let's get real for a second. Your gear is probably worth fifteen or twenty. Uh, so yeah, um, I mean, you have to deal with that. You're you're on Haggerty Marketplace and you're bringing onboarding oh, cars. So oh, what is yeah. that conversation like? And I I don't want to you know you to no no no. Um, I'll give you the I'll give you the I'll give you the inside play right. So I yeah. need a customer without betraying they, any confidence. No, any of your no, no, no. Con which it, you would it, never do. No no no. It's not like that. You, you know, you meet a customer. I mean, this is like this is like sales department of anybody that's selling cars or cell phones or real estate you know th this guy comes to me and he says hey i want you know would you sell my car for me and they always want me to tell them what i think it's worth i've known their car for less than five minutes and they've had their car for two years you know i said you got to tell me what you want for it you know and, and inevitably everybody thinks that that they're going to just like demand a retail number uh, and it's always the highest retail number they've ever heard of for their model so, you know, Porsche 911, I want 65 for it. I'm like, okay, I, you know, that might be a little steep. You know, why don't we try something more realistic? How about 55? And then, you, you know, you negotiate to like 59,000. Then I submit that number to my team, mm -hmm. um, the, my coworkers, and they are going to go, listen, we, we really want this consignment and we really want the car to sell. None of us that work here want to get all dressed up for nothing do you know what i mean so like we're not going to do all the marketing and, and spend all this time on your car and run it on our site only to have it not sell because we all agreed to an unrealistic reserve for that car so my team will probably hit me at 50 you know yeah and then i have to go back and renegotiate my deal um you know just based on whatever it was they submitted i said well, look this is where my team is at and so you know there's a lot of back and forth but the way we put it, John, 
internally is it's better to have a tough conversation now than have a brutal conversation later when we find out their car didn't sell. You know, so in other words, if this, if we had agreed to like this 60 or $65,000 reserve and the car stalled out at 53,000 bucks and we were asking for a $50,000 reserve all along, you know, we didn't do our job right. That's not the customer's fault. So we need to fix that up front. We need to have that tough conversation. And honestly, that single conversation of negotiating the reserve is the only difficult part of my job. All the rest of it is pretty much cake, right? You know, yeah. Uh, identifying the cars, going to see them, you know, uh, you know, doing the work on the computer to get the thing uploaded, meeting up with the photographer to go out early in the morning and get some great shots and, and writing it up and, and then answering questions during the auction. All that stuff to me is easy, but the negotiating the reserve is that's, that's where the magic happens. That's yeah. where, that's where you got to be able to set realistic expectations to get the job done. Well, once again, I'm going to take um, all the credit for chefs, grand sale because uh you know frankly we made an awesome film for it and um you know we uh, we had uh our good friend solomon sold his gt4 uh with with seventy thousand miles on it and he got you know almost a hundred thousand dollars for that car uh why i've seen a common denominator we made a film about it and it was awesome so there it is my huh? Mercedes 190 was looking like it wasn't going to meet reserve, and you helped me pull reserve on that. It wound up going beyond the reserve and doing pretty well. But if we had not done that same thing, thanks to you on the 914, I would still own that car. Yeah. Um, which would be, you know, that'd be a tough one to explain to my wife why I bought another new car. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, you can take credit for a few of them. JP. Well, I mean, so, that's the thing. We, if we had if we had made films about those cars, then we would have had yeah. a much different situation. You'd have been making big money. Anyway, so there it is. If you are uh, considering <laughs> uh, maybe selling your car on an auction site. Maybe give my friend Deeb a call. And uh, when it comes time to uh, having some images shot on that thing and making a film, yeah. give me a Send call. It to Vegas. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Again, um, Haggerty Marketplace does not sponsor this show, but uh, Michael Deeb is employed by those guys. Uh, so yeah. there it is. No! Get those words!